الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم بخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد We begin with Allah's blessed name We praise him and we glorify him as he ought to be praised and glorified And we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers And in particular on the last of them all, the blessed prophet Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam And because we live in dangerous times We pray for his protection From those who will seek to harm us and to prevent us from preaching the truth, from defending the truth, from exposing falsehood, and from standing up against injustice and oppression in the world. I mean. Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We thank the organizers who have worked so hard to organize this third Insight conference. And we are proud of you who have traveled, some of you from very far, from Australia, from the United States, to spend uh, this day with me and tomorrow with Dr. Umar Zaid. If you've not met him as yet, and if you don't know who is Dr. Umar Zaid, there he is, Dr. Umar Zaid. So spend as much time as you can with him. I normally take a minimum of one week to teach Akhirul Zaman. And you've given me one day. <laughs> we had the first international Islamic retreat in Trinidad three years ago, one week. We had the second international Islamic retreat a year and a half ago in Cape Town, one week. The third international Islamic retreat we had to postpone because we saw the clouds of war coming and now the clouds are very dark so this is in place of that one day session uh, so if I have to encompass everything into a nutshell and you have more questions that I can answer there are some of you here I can introduce you to who can answer the questions in my place Perhaps the most important man of all is Muhammad Abraham. Can you see him? He is a he is a webmaster of Imran Hussein dot org. Muhammad Abraham's from Cape Town. He attended the first retreat. He organized the second retreat. Uh, so he knows my thought very well. So he can give the lecture in my place. We also have Shaheen, Sister Shaheen, who attended the second retreat in Cape Town and who has a master's degree in psychology uh, and who has been studying my works and my lectures very well. So keep her company as well. We also have someone who has been at my side for the last 20 years she's been very close to me and any time I begin a lecture she can complete it my wife Aisha where is she there is she <laughs> so you can ask her questions if you have them I want to extend a special welcome to someone from Trinidad I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. He was also born in Trinidad. He's, he's here with us today, Brother Nasheed. 
we are we have bought land in North Malaysia for a Muslim village and our intention is to build an institute of Islamic eschatology uh, to build huts and uh, students would come so long as you have a visa you can stay and accommodation will be free of charge you live in the huts and if you don't have the means we provide the groceries and if you have then you can pay for the groceries and uh, you do your own cooking and every day from 9.30 to 11.30 I'll teach in the masjid the huts are going to be about 25 by 25 we have an architect here from Dubai, Brother Mustafa, who has been in correspondence with me for a few years. <laughs> and I meet him for the first time today. We have another architect who is just here as a chairman. Uh, we have a, a management consultant in construction management uh, who is somewhere around. There he is, out there. Um, and Nasheed also ex has expertise in solar energy. So he's offered to build a hut. So I said, build the first one and power it with solar energy. And uh, it must be a hut that when they come out of the cities like KL, with their, you know, castles of concrete and steel, when they come and look at our hut, <laughs> the tears must flow from their eyes because Part of the hut is built with bamboo. Part with bamboo, part with wood. Mm -hmm. Something that would be uh, a beauty to behold and yet so simple. Uh, so we thank Allah that Brother Nasheed is with us today. Our subject is of supreme importance. Islamic eschatology or ilmu akhiru zaman how important only this subject can explain the world today only this subject can allow us to anticipate tomorrow Allah is alimul ghaib he knows the future we're not playing God. No. But if you study this subject, you would know that our Prophet ﷺ has prophesied events which are to occur in the last stage. And when you study this subject, you can see them coming. So you'll then be able to understand today's international politics, today's international economics, today's international monetary economics. And so you made a good choice. In uh, making the sacrifice, to try to study this subject. If we are to try to find a good starting point, how to explain Il Mu'akhiru Zaman? I think we must first of all explain that we're not talking about the end of the world. The end of the world will come when the mountains are going to be like pieces of cotton wool and the earth is going to pitch out of its bosom, its burden and the earth is going to speak. That's the end of the world. And when this material universe is going to be transformed into something different, something new. And we are going to be in a new form. Jadid. 
في خلق جديد you going to be in a new form that's the end of the world and then you go for judgment we're not talking about the end of the world no the word sa'a encompasses something else beside that we're talking about what we call the end of history when the truth will triumph over falsehood and over all rivals for the last time the final and conclusive triumph of truth over falsehood as allah says in the quran ba'da'uudhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa din al haqq liyudhhirahu 'ala al din kulli wa kafa billahi shahida he is who has sent his messenger muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam with the truth and the guidance that it might triumph over all rivals when will that final end of history occur when the truth will triumph conclusively and finally over all rivals and what are the signs by which we would know that that moment is coming having explained what we are about not the end of the world but the end of history how then do we introduce the subject you teaching a class of students college students how would you start the subject the start is very important because if you make a false move with the start the rest is going to be problematic but if you do it right with the first step it's like marriage everything else is plain sailing the first step and i want to suggest to you that the best way to start is with what is known as the hadith of jibrail alayhi salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the angel gabriel alayhi salam in human form not in front of one individual like maryam alayhi salam no but in front of a whole gathering everybody in public perhaps for the first and only time in human history this is not by accident this is divine wisdom and uh, with this hadith you should take your time because we don't have the time today but take your time and you have to bring out the drama of the event bring it out in such a way the eyes are going to open and they're going to feel the drama of the event when a man enters the masjid or whatever the building was and he's dressed all in white and his hair is black and there's no sign of travel on his body so he can't be a musafir someone who came from the desert they didn't have air condition automatic toyota camrys in those days you had to travel by camel so you'll have the dust of the desert upon you but he had no dust upon him no is he a resident of medina could no one knows him so did he drop out of the sky there's a drama none of this is happening by accident you have to take your audience to get them to feel the drama of the moment and then of course the five questions 1 2 and 3 are part 1 and 4 and 5 are part 2 and 4 and 5 are akhiru zaman when will the last hour come what are the signs of the last hour hmm? and then not only would he ask the questions but when the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam would answer he would say your answer is correct what is this 
we are not accustomed to this. We are accustomed to asking a question of the Messenger of Allah when we do not know the answer. But he knows the answer. And yet he's asking the question. And then he confirms that the answer is correct. Who is he? The drama is intensifying. I've got to cut corners there eh, because I only have one day. <laughs> and then he leaves. Why the drama? Why the angel in human form? That was Jibra'il alayhi salam. Why the questions? Why the focus on Akhirul Zaman? Number one, because Allah wants to make this event, I think it's a song by Nat King Cole, unforgettable. <laughs> he wants to make this event unforgettable. That you will never forget it. That you will never forget it. Everything else is important, but put your focus of attention here. Number two, that he's done all of this to focus attention on this subject, Akhiru Zaman. Number three, he also introduces methodology that if you want to study Akhiru Zaman, you've got to travel a road which begins with Islam which then goes on to Iman and then culminate, culminates with Ihsan which is to see and ta'abud Allah ka'annaka tarah that you should worship or serve Allah as though you're seeing him not with these eyes because as he said to Musa alayhi salam lan tarani not with these eyes you can't see me well then if I can't see him with these eyes, well then with which eyes? Answer. Modern Western civilization says these are the only eyes you have. University, Harvard University says that. Cambridge says that. Sorbonne says that. They all say these are the only eyes. That's their epistemology. The Quran says no. Not only do we have these eyes, but we have these eyes. You can see with the heart. And al ihsan is that you should worship Allah as though you're seeing Him with your internal eye. The internal eye can only see when there is noor in the heart. Yahdillahu li nurihi man yasha. Allah does not. Allah provides nur only to him whom Allah chooses. So nur is not sold in the stock market. How important it is that you should have that nur. Not only that you need the nur to study Akhiru Zaman and without the nur, even with a PhD from Al Azhar, you will not be able to understand it. But in addition to that, if you don't have the nur, that's bad luck. That's bad news. Because Allah says in the Quran and the language is harsh. He says they have eyes and yet do not see. He says they have ears and yet do not hear. He says they have hearts and yet do not understand. <laughs> They're just like cattle. Balhum adal. Rather, they're more misguided than cattle. That's harsh language. Because you're going to be taken for a ride if you don't have noor. And if you do not use that noor and other things as well that we're going to be talking about to study Akhiru Zaman, you're going to be taken for a ride. Like, for example, you're going to make an alliance that Allah has prohibited in the Quran. Prohibited in the Quran. And yet you'll make that alliance 
not knowing that you're being taken for a ride. And then you'll wage war on Dajjal's behalf. You are waging the war for him and you don't even know. And you're going to liberate Libya. And we have some from Libya here today. And when you liberate Libya and you're beating the drums, you fool. And my language is deliberately harsh. You fool. What you have done is given Libya to NATO. And NATO now controls Libya because of you fool. And that's the softest language I can find for them. And they're doing the same thing in Syria. And you will announce that he is killing his own people. The Syrian government is killing its own people. Oh, I see. Wonderful statement, Mr. <coughs> President. But have you been sleeping, Mr. President? Has it been a very sound sleep? Are you not aware that this country and that country and that country which are allies of the Zionists are training and arming and financing armed men to enter into Syria to wage bloody insurrection and to commit atrocious acts of terrorism? Are you not aware of that? And what is the government supposed to do? Put a red carpet to welcome them? And when a government intends to defend itself against armed insurrection, foreign armed insurrection, Mr. President, are you going to condemn that government? I hope the same thing happens to your country one day. If you don't have the know, you would not know, for example, that a loan from the IMF at 1.5% interest is still riba. So you'll send to Al-Azhar University for a fatwa. <laughs> huh? They have eyes and yet do not see. This is how important is this methodology. Islam to Iman to Ihsan. And then in question number five, what are the signs of the last day? And two are given. One is that you'll find the naked barefooted shepherds competing with each other in the construction of high-rise buildings. That's easy to see. That's plain, that's clear. That's out there in the open. You don't even need spectacles for that. Okay? Well, what's the second one? And tell you that amatu rabbataha that a slave woman will give birth to her mistress. Two different signs, not by accident. These two different signs are given to teach us about methodology. That there are some signs of Akhir zaman which are plain and clear. And the other signs of Akhir zaman which have to be interpreted. And you need a methodology of interpretation. This is the best way to begin the subject, to introduce your audience, provided of course that you get the skill of a storyteller to be able to tell the story. Could you? Give us the first slide. The one of the hadith. There we are. Go ahead. Too fast for you? Too fast? All right, we'll do that a little slower. <laughs> All right. So that's the hadith with which you will begin the subject of Ilmu Akhiru Zaman. We then turn now to methodology.
And uh, in the same way that the hadith introduces to the fact that there are some signs of Akhir zaman which are plain and clear. And there are other signs which have to be interpreted. We now turn to the Quran, which is slide number two. Here we are. This is Surah to Surah to Ali Imran, and it is verse number seven. And in this ayah of the Quran, Allah speaks about two different kinds of verses in the Quran. Confirming what we just said about those two signs of the last day. The lofty tall buildings and the slave woman giving birth to her mistress. The second one is difficult, very difficult. And you need a proper methodology to be able to penetrate number two. It's not easy. Similar are the verses of the Quran. There you are. There are some verses of the Quran which are plain and clear. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُمْ The month of fasting is Ramadan. There's no two questions, no ifs and buts about that. It's Ramadan, although Habib Burakiba in Tunisia wanted to change it from Ramadan. <laughs> the month of fasting is Ramadan. Okay? The ayah is plain and clear. Many, most of the verses of the Quran are like that. Plain and clear. And these are Ummul Kitab. This is the foundation of the book. But Allah says that in addition to those ayat, there are also other verses of the Quran which are mutashabihat, meaning they have to be subjected to ta'wil. They have to be interpreted. And now, remember that the Quran came down to the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. He then spoke the words of the Quran and the scribes would record what he spoke and after they had recorded it he didn't say show me what you've written let me check it out why he couldn't read no so he'd ask them to read what they had written and then he'd confirm but what they had written was correct. So, listen carefully. The punctuation did not come from above. We put in the punctuation. The Arab did not come from above. We put in the Fatha and Kesra and Dhamma. And sometimes the same word with identical spelling, the same spelling, the same word, the same spelling can be pronounced differently with two different meanings. All right? So be careful. Mutashabihat are those verses of the Quran which have to be subjected to ta'wil. Ta'wil means interpretation. Now, the verse goes on to say that only Allah, only Allah knows 